Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Your Excellency, thank you for this opportunity. As the youth, we have one major concern. Why are we going to school? We go to school every single morning because our parents told us, go to school, get an education, live a better life than mine. Yet, right now, you don't get a job based on merit. You get a job based on who, who you know. It is very unfortunate that there are a lot of graduates who are sitting at home despite deserving an opportunity. There is a quote on the internet. It says, corruption is not a game of the poor. Those who are rich will continue to get rich. And those who are weak, those who are poor will continue to be poor. We as the youth want to know how is it going to change? When is it going to change? We acknowledge that there are a lot of boards that are trying to fight corruption. But is it really working? That's what we want to know, Your Excellency. Thank you. These are the young people. A lot of parents in our society value education. They are investing in the future of their children and saying the future is in the hands of the youths. But uh, the youths are saying now they don't see the real value of education. They invest in acquiring uh, a degree uh, up to PhD level. And they are hoping that education will open the gates for prosperity and success in their lives. But they are uh, seeing that it's not the education that gets you where you want. It's the money that opens the doors. And uh, the poor continue to be poor. So there is a division of class in our society. And uh, the uh, child speaker is going to also buttress these key points from the youth sector. Thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Your Excellency, my senior. <laughs> well, Your Excellency, first and foremost, I would just like to point out this issue. I think it's an open secret that we all know that the system of Zimbabwe at large is just full of corruption. So our main issue and our main call, prior call is exactly how can we eradicate this obstacle. Now we're looking at the grade seven results that were out, Your Excellency. We actually, as junior parliament, we're having many problematic calls that most of these parents are not being able to acquire their, their children's certificate call just because they have not paid um, the amount of persuasion fee for them to acquire that. But then, Your Excellency, there are actually policies in the education sector that minor call that if any parent is not able to afford that school fees, a child is supposed to be left behind. And the prior call is for that child to get their certificate. Now, right now, I'm looking at policies in Zimbabwe, Your Excellency. They're just there. But the implementation of those policies are not being implemented. So we as a youth, like my fellow honorables alluded to, that the future, we are the future of tomorrow. I mean, we are the leaders of tomorrow. You are not always going to be the president, Your Excellency. Maybe someday I can even take up your position. <laughs> But then the prior call is that we need to erad not just run away from the problems. The right time that you and I, as the junior parliament, we actually face the problems and the issues that are hindering the progress of the youth at large. What we need is to actually have strategic plans for us to actually eradicate these problems. And how do that, Your Excellency? We need to revisit those policies that have been alluded to. And the policies are supposed to be re-amended and we can have a prior call to exactly what we want and what we deserve in the prior call of those policies. Because we just have them, but then they're not being implemented. So this is what we want you as our leader to actually allude to. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency, for sitting, uh, listening to the concerns the widows eh, who are also pensioners are struggling on bank queues. They get money that is rejected. The youth are looking up to the leadership of the country to say, 
what happens next after obtaining good education. Some children are suffering. They can't access uh, identity documents. And there are challenges. The poor continue to be marginalized. And this is the experience all over. And um, now, Your Excellency, um, yes, uh, it's your turn to make comments regarding these issues that have been placed before you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Sagandwenda kune uyu. We are going to school when employment options are either not existent or based on favoritism, nepotism, not merit. Is corruption ending or deepening? Corruption is not government policy. I am in government and I'm your president for now. Because you may also become president in the future. So, as government, if we also look into our own constitution, there's a provision in our constitution which provides for the creation of a commission to fight corruption. Corruption has not only begun with Zimbabwe. Even in the time of Jesus, corruption was there. And even that time, they were fighting it. So we we'll continue to fight corruption. I created, when I came to office, there was another commission which was there, the first, I think, um, uh, uh, Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission. I dismantled it because the public did not have any confidence anymore in that commission. What I was receiving was that the commission was even more corrupt than the work it was supposed to be doing. So I dismissed the whole uh, commission. I created a new one, a new corruption. And at the head of that corruption is a lady, a woman, whose history is very, very uh, strict. She has a very strict uh, background in terms of administration and so on, a former judge. So she's the head, and she brooks no nonsense, and I'm happy. Unless somebody corrupts here, which is very difficult, she might change. So we have a commission to fight corruption. How do we fight corruption? We need the support of our population, our people. Because this corruption is among our people, both in the public sector and in the private sector. Those who suffer corruption, it's very difficult, uh, my little uh, daughter. Corruption is not done by one person to himself. It's one person with somebody else. So for it to come out, something must go wrong between the two, then they report each other. If things go smoothly, you never discover. The second thing is that when corruption is being conducted, if a third party sees it and it does not benefit, that person must also report. That's one way. The, uh, the third element or fourth element is that when there is forensic audit or audit of um, uh, books about what has happened, they may discover that some corruption took place and then again to be followed. But critically, the public itself must participate in fighting corruption. It will be misfortune if our people think that the executive has the duty to discover corruption. No, it is everybody in society, including yourself as children. If your headmaster is committed in corruption, your teacher, your, 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 your own um, schoolmates, it is your duty, if you're an honest citizen, to report the corruption which you come across. It is our intention uh, as government to eradicate a corruption. But I'm also sure you, we, there is an index in the, country, uh, in the world of less corrupt countries up to the most corrupt countries. So 
I don't know where Zimbabwe is. Some, uh, some people here might know. I think we are quite down, but not at the bottom. And we will continue fighting. As we continue fighting, and also in the process of fighting corruption, we will discover the weaknesses of all pieces of legislation and continue to strengthen that fight by amending our laws to be more stringent against the corruption. And this must come this must come both from the public sector, that is government, public sector, parastatal government ministries, and the private sector must also come forward and say, uh, because this thing is ours together. We all want a free society without corruption. We must all contribute to strengthen our laws. If, there, if there's any weaknesses which people identify with the current system of the commission, I want to hear it. I'm a listening president. I will change. And they make sure we strengthen that aspect. Then you say that uh, why continue going to school if there's no employment? If you went to South Africa, if you went to New Zealand, you went to Australia, you went to London, you went to any other country in the world, you will find a lot of Zimbabweans at the top of a major uh, 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 um, companies, right? Global companies. You find Zimbabwean citizens at the top. They wouldn't go to the top if they had no education. They should be heading cattle. But you find them at the top because they have this education. We are not proud that our people are outside there. No, they are outside there because of the circumstances of our economy here. Which background have you just explained to Naamai Kunokuti? Why are we in these problems? But with these problems, we still are going to do what we think is right for our country. We were punished because we took our land and we will never, never change. We will remain solid on that issue and we will make sure that heritage of our land will be passed on to you. And I hope you young people are going to defend our land even after we have gone. But fortunately, fortunately, God has given us enough resources if we remain united, stable, and work in harmony, we can use our resources and better our lives. It's not an event. It's a process which we must do. And you can see uh, this year, 2019, our GDP growth is minus, if you understand. It's minus 6.5, I think, even more, which means we're not growing at all. We're shrinking. But come and invite me here in March or April next year. We will have gone past because of the measures we have taken without any foreign assistance, no send from outside, but all of it from our own policies, own resources, managing our own resources to grow our own economy, modernize our own economy. Right? So, you should continue to um, appreciate the education we give you. It's good for you, whether you're employed or not employed. Better be unemployed but educated. More especially technologically with ICT. Better have all those uh, attributes. You can, uh, you can go out, you get uh, jobs, but what is critical is that we must create those jobs in Zimbabwe. Actually, we are looking at you. We are old. You give me this thing here. I don't know what it's called, a computer, whatever it is called. What's it called? A tablet. The tablet is for info. <laughs> huh? Now, this is also a tablet. And now, you understand how to use these things. Do you, do you expect me to understand these things? No. This is why we send you to school. Every single Zimbabwean child should feel comfortable in Zimbabwe, outside Zimbabwe, in America, in UK, in France, in Russia. You should be able to compete at the world stage. We must do our best to make sure we make you competent uh, young people who can mingle and stand your ground as Zimbabweans wherever you go. So don't say because there's no employment, you don't like education. No, no, you should continue having education. What about... Uh, 
worried about deepening corruption and the hiking fees and the inability to redeem certificates. Oh, yeah. These are policies. Uh, I think that you have to pay school fees. If you have paid your school fees at the end of the year, I think you get your certificate. I think what you are saying is that um, you complete your education, but because you've not paid your school fees, and huh? yeah, then they don't give you um, your certificate. We cannot have a policy where we say, don't worry whether someone has paid school fees or not. They must all get school fees. No, 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 no. Policy is something else. That is a challenge which we as government must find ways of assisting those who are unable to comply with policy. The policy is correct. It is the social environment, economic status of the family, which makes it difficult for them to be able to comply with the policy. The policy is correct. This is why we have social, um, safe, what we call safety nets, to assist those families who are unable. We have a lot of, I think over nearly now, over, over three million students under BIM, whom we pay for. And this time around in our budget, we've increased it, double, more than double, the BIM um, uh, allocation, so that the parents who are unable to pay school fees, they apply, the system through each school they apply and the kids are paid for through BIM. So uh, we, we don't have to change policy. We must find safety nets to look after our citizens who are unable to, uh, uh, who are coming from poor families and are unable to pursue their education. Problem of policy which go unimplemented to the detriment of the youth. This is why I'm a listening president. You are saying these certain policies are not being implemented and they are detriment to the youth. Come and tell me which policy. Was I, I don't know the ministers here. I have minister, and she's young. She's a youth, a cast Coventry. She's one of you. Now, if there are things she ought to be doing which she's not doing, tell me that this minister, the president, is not implementing the following policies. And I'll take it to. Uh, to account. So this is why it is good to have this conversation because I get to know the weaknesses of government, where government is uh, not performing, where we have weaknesses. Some weaknesses may be just a result of ministers not being on their job, but some weaknesses may be as a result of the structure of government or the policies which we have. So with such conversations, I'm able to improve how government delivers services to the people. We are supposed to service our people. It is critically important. And if we don't, we get voted out. Who wants to be voted out? I want me to be president. So uh, I would like to make sure we do the right things so I can continue. Teaching or tonga. Teaching or tonga.